Dhamikshagrahomeshti Dhamodareha Namaste to Dhamne Spur Adipti Dhamne Dvadi Udhar Hayatta Vishwasya Dhamne Adipti Dhamne Namo Radhikaya Tvati Hai Pri Hai Hai Namo Nanta Leelaya Devaya Tubhyam Namo Radhikaya Tvati Hai Pri Hai Hai Namo Nanta Leelaya Devaya to Vyam Dhamon Atalila Dhamon Atalila Dhamon Atalila Jasoda be a look at Hamadam, Padam Smita Yantia to the Tiagopia. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna. Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare 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 Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Ram Ha, Hare Ram Ha, Ram Ha Ram Ha, Hare Hare. Hare Hare. Hare Ram Ha, Hare Ram Ha, Ram Ha Ram Ha, Hare Ram. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare. Hare Ram Ha, Hare Ram Ha, Ram Ha Ram Ha, Hare Hare. Hey, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare. Hey, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare. Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Krishna Krishna. Tai Gor, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Hare, Hare Hare, Hare Hare, Hare Hare Krishna, 
the name on high. Hey, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna, Krishna. Hare Hare Ram Hare Ram Hare Ram Hare 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 Krishna 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 Nithai Gaur Hare Gaurangam Hare Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Ram Hare Ram Hare Ram Hare 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 Krishna Krishna Nitha Gaur Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Hare, Hare Hare, Hare Hare, Hare Hare, Krishna Krishna, and the Tiger. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Hare, Hare Hare, Hare Hare, Hare Hare, Krishna Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Yuva Hare, and I go to Brahmananda, hey. And here Tiger Hare 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 Jai Jai Radha Damodar Radha Damodar Hare Jai Radha Damodar Radha Damodar Hare Radha Damodar Hare Kishore 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 Jai Kisha 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 Jai Radhe Jai Radhe Jai Radhe Jai Jai Radhe 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 Hare Tiger Hare 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 
जय जय प्रभु 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 जय प्रभु प्रभु और प्रेम नंदी जी प्रभु पार की to the supreme controller who possesses the eternal form of blissful knowledge whose glistening earrings swing to and fro who manifested himself in goku who stole the butter that the gopis kept hanging from the rafters of their storerooms and then quickly jumped up and ran in retreat in fear of mother yasoda but was ultimately caught to that supreme lord shri damodar i offer my humble obeisances <laughs>
Shri Ki Jai, Shri Sri Radha Damodhar Ki Jai, Shri Sri Jagannath Baladev Subhadra Maharani Ki Jai, Shri Sri Gornathai Ki Jai, Sri Hari Nam Sankirtan Ki Jai, Gaur Premanandi, Glories to the assembled devotees, Glories to the assembled devotees, All glories to Sri Guru and Sri Gauranga, Gauranga, mm-hmm. Every day, we're going to review a little bit about chanting japa. So for the last three days, this is the fourth, we've been <clears throat> giving a little hint, tip, idea how to approach the holy name with greater devotion, with greater attention. 
both. So the first day we spoke about um, accessing greater attention by hearing very carefully the first hare, which allows one to, when we say, maximize attention in the rest of the mantra. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. And the second day we talked about how important it is not to try to finish rounds, <clears throat> but trying to meet Krishna in the rounds. The rounds will get finished just by the, the sake of chanting. One doesn't have to endeavor to complete their rounds, one has to endeavor to try to have the pr proper mood in approaching Krishna and His holy name, always remembering that the name of Krishna and Krishna is non-different. <clears throat> this is a little bit difficult to understand because we see the deity, we get a clear understanding there's Krishna in the form of the deity, but the name just seems to be a little less, what we say, available to our consciousness so, but that same personality <clears throat> has in, invested all the powers within existence in his name, and his name is none different than himself. So, in the same way, sometimes we call it Nam Prabhu. We refer to the name as Nam Prabhu, as the Namanda Nam is our master, <clears throat> like that. So, in that way, we approach the master in a very a submissive way and a very eager way for devotional activities. And then yesterday we spoke about how we cannot bring about artificially the quality of our chanting when Krishna sees that one is endeavoring nicely to chant and Krishna will reveal himself more and more in the name. So the, the caution was don't try to force quality, simply try to hear nicely. Quality will come. <clears throat> Try to control the mind. That's where the force comes. Or we might say, when Prabhupada was asked a question by one devotee, um, <clears throat> I can't control my mind when I chant japa. Prabhupada said, what is this mind? He said, just hear, that's all. In other words, forget your mind. <laughs> your mind will not forget you, <laughs> but you should forget it. <laughs> One of the ways to control the mind, it's mentioned in the Bhagavatam. Prabhupada makes a very powerful emphasis, 5th canto, 11th chapter, verse number 17, last verse in the chapter, where he says, one way to control the mind is neglect. <laughs> he uses one word, just neglect. Learn how to neglect your mind. <clears throat> Especially during Japa, when it has so many ideas and plans. It's interesting how <clears throat> the mind becomes more active when we chant japa. <laughs> because it's active all the time, but now you're pushing it out and it doesn't like it. <laughs> and so it's fighting back. And that's why it appears to be more active because now it's getting pushed aside for, for the holy name and it just says, hey, what do you mean? You know me, me and you are friends. You've been listening to me for 150,000 bursts. So why are you giving up now? <laughs> So you have to realize he doesn't like another position, <laughs> another being the CEO. So we have to realize that it's going to be stronger when you start chanting. <laughs> but at the same time, just learn how to neglect it. Neglect it means ignore it. Ignore it means to focus on the sound of Krishna's name. So just hear, as Prabhupada said, just try to hear nicely. Like that. That's why we emphasize hearing by emphasizing focus on the first hare that increases the quality of our hearing, or increases the, um, what we say, the ability to hear clear and more, what we say, continuously. <clears throat> I'll get, okay, yes, sure, of course, yeah. You're trying to get some juice from chanting. That's forcing it. Where's the ecstasy? Even if it's 
there's no taste for chanting, still go on chanting nicely. It's harder to chant with no taste, but still, you can't make taste happen. It comes by Krishna's arrangement. <clears throat> yeah, that's the difference. Um, I have two more tips, but I'll give you only one today, <clears throat> which I think is more of a simple tip since I've gave him so many practical things. Um, this was appreciated by devotees when I mentioned it into our uh, Kirtan Mailer program. And um, you got two hands, one's on the bead. Uh, what do you do with this guy? <laughs> <laughs> so the yogis they you see yogis they're like this okay why you see a yogi like this we got our froggy in the hall out there he's he's like this right and he knows how to meditate <laughs> so you can't do that with the japa hand obviously because you have to hold the beads nicely but this hand you can do it with and why is it what does this mean it means, actually, it en enhances concentration. That's why the yogis do it. It's a mudra for concentration. So I mentioned that, and Sachinandan Maharaj really appreciated it, and he said, it, it does help. <laughs> it does help. So keeping this hand engaged by doing like this, you can just put it on your lap like this. You see, Srila Haridas Thakur, where is his beads? His beads are right here next to his heart. I saw some of you devotees are chanting like that. That's nice. Holding the beads up. You can hold it here. That's okay. But it's nicer when it's closer to the heart because you're chanting. And chanting means devotion. So, so if you see Srila Haridas Thakur, he always has his hands next to his heart when he's chanting like this. So this is the perfect position. and keeping the back straight like that. <clears throat> it's a little... Well, we say forced at the beginning, but once you get into it, you'll find after a while it's nice. It increases your attention like that. And the, huh? I guess the arm gets tired. Because you've got big beads, that's why. <laughs> Some of you are late weightlifting, you know. <laughs> Rupa Goswami sized beads, you know. <laughs> that doesn't answer your question, I know. <laughs> so just bring it down once in a while. <laughs> and then bring it back up. <laughs> when it gets to the point of going, when you're going, Ooh. I can't stand straight up anymore. <laughs> now just bring it down and put on. But don't put your beads on your on the floor. One time, one devotee was sitting with Prabhupada alone in a room, and he had his beads on his dhoti, and the dhoti was touching the floor. And Prabhupada said, your beads are on the floor. Prabhupada, he said, no, my beads are on the dhoti. He said, your dhoti's on the floor. <laughs> so if you put it on the dhoti and the dhoti's touching the floor, it's like the same thing. So keep it up off the floor. Like that. These are some practical hints, yes. I was, what was I doing? What was I, do? like this you mean? Huh? Uh, circles like this? That just happens naturally, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I don't even know I'm doing it. I just it just happens. Don't try. I mean if you want to try, you can try it. I, mean, it's a, I have no problem. I don't have a patent on it. You can do it. <laughs> you can just, you know, it's just like I don't know, it's just the way I chant. Sometimes I don't do that, but sometimes I do. I think you see devotees, they go like this, right? Some of them go like this. <laughs> Some go like, All right, Krishna. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna. 
<laughs> call that dive bomber japa. <laughs> so, yeah, so, you know, whatever helps to, ch to chant nicer. That's not a feature of japa. That just happens like that. Okay, keep your japa up because japa is important. Make it the most important thing of the day and you'll find the rest of the day will also be what we say. You'll be able to deal with the challenges throughout the day. It's not like if you get good japa, you're not going to get any challenges. Challenges are always there. That's life. But at least you're prepared and you're able to have the equipment to deal with these things. Because the holy name being with you means you're, you're more fixed in how to act and to react to different situations. So yeah, the holy name makes the difference throughout the whole day when we chant early and what we say nicely. Mm -hmm. Was oh, that sign is still up there? What does it say? Is it, what, is it, what kind of rounds to chant? Good rounds. <laughs> That's Prabhupada's statement. 16 good rounds. So try to make it good. <laughs> okay, any other questions regarding the holy name? Yes. I'm sorry, I'm not quite understanding the question. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, you sure. And everything does. Your relationships with the other devotees, your enthusiasm for service, you're following the four regulative principles. Everything is going to affect your rounds. And you're going to enhance or make it difficult to chant by how much whatever you do the other 22 hours of the day, yeah. And Prabhupada said chanting is part of the process. And the process is to follow the process of bhakti as given by the spiritual master. So as long as we're following in the best possible way, we're also helping to emphasize the chanting of our rounds. It's not independent. Yeah, everything. Especially, what, most especially is your relationship with other Vaishnavas. That's the, the key thing that will really make the big deal, biggest difference in your chanting. How, what kind of, the quality of our relationship with other devotees. Why is that? Because it's philosophically sound, whereas we can't really have a relationship with Krishna if we're not really developing or working on our relationships with other devotees. So, that's important. <clears throat> Vaishnav Seva is important. Okay. Okay, thank you. Srimad Bhagavatam, Canto 4, Chapter 31, Narada's Instructions to the Potatoes, Text Number 4. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya So Tamagatam ta uttaya Tamagatam ta uta Tamagatam ta uttaya Prani patya binandya cha Prani patya binandya cha Puja yadva yata desam Puja yadva yata desam Sukasinam atabruvan Sukasinam mata bruvan Tamagatam ta utaya 
ಪ್ರಾಪತ್ಯ ಪೂಜಯತ್ವಾಯತೀನ ಮತಾವೃವನ್ ladies Tum, to him, agatam, appeared, te, all the prachetas, utaya, after getting up, vernipatya, offering obeisances, abhinandya, offering welcome, cha, also, pujahitva, worshipping, yata adesam according to regulative principles sukha asinam comfortably situated ata thus abruvan they said translation purport by his divine grace ac bhakti vedanta swami prabhupad As soon as the prachetas as soon as the prachetas saw the great sage Narada had appeared they immediately got up even from their asanas as and require as required they immediately offered obeisances and worshiped him and when they saw Narada was properly seated they began to ask him questions I'll repeat that as soon as the prachetas saw the great sage Narada had appeared they meet go ahead yeah want to repeat that as soon as prachetas saw the great sage narada had appeared they immediately got up even from their asanas as required they immediately offered obeisances and worshiped him and when they saw that narada muni was properly seated they began to ask him questions purport is only one sentence please listen up it is significant that all the prachetas were engaged in practicing yoga to concentrate their mind on the supreme personality of godhead it is significant that all the prachetas were engaged in practicing yoga to concentrate their mind on the supreme personality of godhead om agyan timirandasya gina jana salakaya ಚಕ್ಷು ಉನ್ಮಿಲಿತ ಯೇನ ತಸ್ಮೈ ಶ್ರೀ ಗುರುವೈ ನಮಃ 
Shri Chaitanya Mano Bistam Staptitam Yena Bhutale Swayam Rupa Kadam Mayam Dadati Swam Padati Kam Jaya Sri Krishna Chaitanya Pramunatananda Sri Advaita Gadadhar Sri Vasari Gaur Bhakta Vrindam Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama Rama Hare Hare So the Prachetas were engaged in concentrating their mind on the Supreme Personality of Godhead. But they noticed when Narada Muni got in, they stopped and they immediately rose from their asanas. And they offered obeisances and offered worship. And worship could be done in different ways, but offering welcome, words of welcome and also doing formal worship, sometimes when a great sage comes, you wash their feet or even do puja, offer flowers like that. Offering, respecting, you know, the great souls is non-different or what we say, as good as respecting the Supreme Personality of Godhead. And therefore, it is actually the basis of all Vaishnava etiquette to honor Krishna's representative in the way that is pleasing, or what we say, according to etiquette. You notice they immediately rised. They rose. They rose up. That's also one way to welcome. If a great sage walks in the room and one remains seated, unless they're absorbed in meditation, then that is considered a breach of etiquette, or not proper way to welcome. Etiquette is the is 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 mentioned in the Shastras, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu glorifies Srila Sanatan Goswami in Anchalila where he describes that you are the best of all devotees because you are properly executing the behavior of a devotee. And one who does not honor proper etiquette, they become what we say laughing stock. He uses the word laughing stock. Of others, in other words, for those who know, they see this person as a fool because they don't know how to act. Um, behavior is better is higher than philosophy. <laughs> Sounds a little bit controversial. One may know the proper scriptures, and one may be able to quote scripture, but if behavior is not proper, then you know their scriptural knowledge is useless. When we maybe say. Just a big burden. It just causes one added pride. So behavior, what is behavior? It's called Vaishnav etiquette. We use that term, the behavior of a Vaishnav. And also it says that, you know, example is higher than precept. Um, precept means philosophical statements, but what you do, how you act, and how you interact is more the quality of a Vaishnav than, you know, what they know. What they know will add to what they act. But just knowing without acting is more like pretense or has no real, what we say, um, honor within Vaishnav circles. <laughs> um, Sanatan Goswami in glorifies Srila Haridas Thakur. He says some people preach, but their behavior is not so, what we say, acceptable. And others, they don't preach, but they have ideal behavior. And he says, you are the best of both because you are preaching and your behavior is impeccable. But when we compare the two, we find that behavior is outstanding. Um, there was an example where Sometimes we find that even I had an incident just about a couple of weeks ago that was really quite edifying, although at first it was quite difficult to accept. <laughs> but there was another example where one senior devotee was on the airplane and the airplane had just landed. He was in a hurry to get off the airplane, so he was trying to move through the crowd of people getting off. And he was a little bit, what we say, rude. He made the way he was carrying himself. Or not sensitive to other people around him. And uh, one lady said, seeing him in Dodi, she said, Is it, does your religion teach you to be 
impolite. <laughs> so, and then he got shocked and became sensible. <laughs> so, even in people in general, when they see people, devotees that wear dhotis or tilak or sari, we're not acting properly, they think, what is this? What is the use of such religion? Behavior is, is the most important thing. Um, I'll tell you my, should I tell you my story? <laughs> uh, you really want to hear it? It's a hard one to tell, but I'll tell it. Because it, it really helps me. To, uh, I was traveling from Croatia to London. And I was tired because we had a, a late night program the night before. And I had an you know, get ready in the morning and just jump on the flight. I round up missing breakfast and taking breakfast at the airport in a hurry with a bunch of devotees. And then I ran onto the plane. I was tired. And I had been stopped going through London the time before that. And I was detained for five hours. And they had questioned me. And finally they let me through because I used the wrong word. When you use the wrong word to immigration officers, it becomes a problem. And so after everything was cleared, they let me through, but it was on record that I was detained. <laughs> so I had came through again, and this, I had a, this time I had an invitation letter, which was required. The devotee said, well, okay, next time you go through, we'll give you an invitation letter, and then you can bypass all the difficulties. And of course, when I went up there, there was a nice, there was a lady there, Afro-American lady, very sober looking, kind of in her 50s maybe. And she looked at me and she says, why are you coming? We have records that you were stopped before. I showed her my paper, she read it. And I said, well, I'm just going to the temple and stay there and I'll give some classes and I'm preaching. And I was kind of anxious you know, why am I getting stopped again? And I was kind of like pushing it. And my consciousness was not right because I was both tired and trying to get through. She noted that and she started to preach to me. <laughs> really, she started to quote Bible over and over again about how, you know, are we for ourselves? Or are we for God? <laughs> Most people, they practice religion for their own self. <laughs> she was chastising me <laughs> pretty heavy. <laughs> and I was listening. And then I, then I heard Super Soul say, just listen. <laughs> Don't say anything. And she went on quote, quoting the Bibles about Adam and Eve and being allowed into the kingdom of heaven. You know, you have to be let in. <laughs> and she went on and on and on. And I was like, okay, I need to hear this. <laughs> And finally, I started to calm down. And she had written out a detainee sh sheet. She was going to detain me again and put me through scrutiny. It would have been hours of questions again because the immigrations are like really heavy. So I said, okay, here we go again, Krishna. <laughs> and then finally, I somehow or other took shelter of Krishna and I just listened. And I thought, she's really preaching nicely. She told me her own personal story. She was traveling on a train and she was late. And then when she got to one station, she had to switch trains. And when she got on the second train, the conductor made her wait two and a half hours for another train. And she said to herself, hmm, why is God doing this to me? She told me that story. And then she said, when I said that, I felt very peaceful. And then I said, all right, I'm listening. And I was hearing more and more and more. And finally, I think I finally reached Krishna consciousness just by listening to her. <laughs> and then finally, she noted that, and Krishna's in the heart, and she just took the paper that she had written out for a detainee slip, and she just crumpled it up and threw it away. And she said, okay. She stamped my passport. <laughs> and then I said, thank you for your mercy. Then I said, no, thank you for God's mercy. And she smiled. And I went on. <laughs> and then she said to me during that time, you know, I wasn't supposed to be here today. I was supposed to be on break at this time. 
But I'm, now, I want, now I understand why I'm here. <laughs> you know, some people, they really have a, a real sense of God, and they understand that God is directing every aspect of their life. And she was able to, to understand that in her own practice as a Christian. And it was really, really amazing as I was listening. And then when I walked away... I was feeling humbled and happy. <laughs> and all of a sudden, prayers, prayers to Krishna started to appear in my mind. And then I, you know, I was thinking, you know, Prabhupada said, you can, you can hear truth from anybody. Even from, he said that old saying, of course, this doesn't apply in this case, but it's also true. One can get gold from a filthy place. I just read in Drajumla Maharaj, if you read his latest, he had a similar situation, right? He was on the airplane, he was tired, he was fighting in so many things, and finally he was getting so many difficulty, and finally when he just calmed down and took shelter, everything changed, right? So sometimes we're like that, especially when you're traveling, you know, you're tired and you're in a hurry, you haven't to eat right, and so many things. And you're just thinking, I got to get to where I'm going. And you forget that people are watching you and you're not acting properly. Or you're not responding to the situation when they ask you to do something, especially if there's some officials or something like that. I'm a Hare Krishna. Why are you stopping me? I'm on the highest platform, you know. <laughs> if we get like that... And, then we've, then we've lost everything, you know. And as soon as I took shelter of Krishna, and, and actually, I mean, I didn't just think, oh, I should listen to her. I realized Krishna was coming through her in a very powerful way. And I just started to listen. And when I did, I felt so happy. And at that point, I was thinking, all right, if I got to get detained, I'll get detained. But then she just took the detainee slip and her, her mind just changed and she just crumpled it up, threw it away. She remained sober. She smiled and said, stamped the passport. <laughs> so then you realize that Krishna consciousness is really about learning how to take shelter of Krishna at every moment. And that's Vaishnava etiquette. Vaishnava etiquette means to behave in such a way as always one is always remembering Krishna. Because when is only one is practicing remembering Krishna, one will always act in the best possible way. And if one forgets Krishna, then there, there's an opportunity to make mistakes. Um, Daksha didn't recognize Lord Shiva when he came into the assembly. And he criticized Shiva for not getting up and honoring him. But Shiva didn't breach the etiquette by not honoring Daksha because it says that Shiva was so immersed in his heart on the Supreme Personality of Godhead that just by doing that he was honoring not only Daksha but every living entity. <laughs> so by remembering Krishna, one will always get what we say, the knowledge but one has to practice and learn proper etiquette. And Prabhupada mentions that throughout the Shastras. What is the behavior of a Vaishnava? I think he says, behavior without character. I mean, bat, without... Oh, I forgot how it goes. In other words... A person may have so much knowledge, but what is their character? Because people see your character. Even, even people who are in a lower sense, they appreciate someone with a higher character. They'll also give respect when they see that. Because they know within their hearts, this is nice. This is a proper person. So behavior is actually the way. And that's, that applies to all aspects here. So Narada was properly seated. And then what did they do? They started to ask him questions. They didn't say, well, of course they could have said, you know, how's it going, Narada? <laughs> Who are you meeting nowadays? But that was, that's not the way to approach a saintly person. A saintly person comes there, and then the first thing you do is you take advantage of their presence by inquiring from them about what you can learn 
in your own spiritual practice. Here's a chance to learn something. Because as we read the books, we may not be able to question directly because, you know, the books are the books. But when the saintly person comes, questions. Questions come, and when questions come, that helps to clarify. clarify. Maybe if we, even if we know something is 90% correct, still we may need a clarification in order, in order to have a confirmation about what we're doing so we can act enthusiastically. So to question saintly persons is the way to associate with saintly persons. That is the way to associate with them. It's not like we try to sit there and... Sometimes a saintly person will treat others in a very friendly way, in a very accommodating way, but if the devotees take advantage of that and use that to simply to become lax in their relationship, then, then one can breach character and etiquette can be lost and also offenses can be made. So he was properly seated, probably probably uses the word properly seated. They didn't say, oh, now are you here? Hey, go find a chair. There's one over there. <laughs> no, they actually brought him, they showed him a seat. They guided him to a seat like that. That is the etiquette. It's worship, honoring a saintly person is honoring the supreme personality of Godhead. It's no difference. It's the same. The saintly person doesn't expect honor. He thinks that, you know, I'm just the representative of the Lord, and therefore, whatever honor I'm getting, it simply goes to the Supreme Lord. But he also knows that there is a certain etiquette of behavior. So if a person is not behaving properly, transmission of knowledge will become blocked or non-existence. So sometimes we see people ask, ask questions, but they're... In, their mood and their way is more challenging or getting a confirmation to for what they already know. <laughs> I know something, I'm going to ask a question, and I just want to hear how right I am about what I know. <laughs> Isn't it true, Maharaj? <laughs> First three words, isn't it true? <laughs> There's a lot of truth. doesn't mean this one is also included. <laughs> so, you know... A lot of times, so the question is, the question is how to take advantage of a saintly person's presence by asking questions. And here, and the significant point of the purport is that they were practicing yoga with their minds concentrated on the Supreme Lord. I think Prabhupada's point here in the purport is, although it's only one line, is that he wants to make the point that their minds were concentrated on the Lord, and that's real yoga. There are, are different types of yogas and different ways to practice spirituality. But the essence, or what we say the recommended way, is to concentrate the mind on the Supreme. So concentrating the mind on the Supreme means to chant the holy names of the Lord, to take darshan of the Lord, and to serve the Lord in devotional service. By serving the Lord, we can become easier and easier to think of the Lord. As you develop a relationship through service, then your mind becomes more and more able to focus on thinking about Krishna. You can just think. If someone says, think of Krishna, what would you think about? Immediately, what would come to your mind? the deity of Shishi Kishore Kishori, or your own particular uh, object of worship, maybe Gornitai or Jagannath or something like that. So that's uh, thinking of Krishna means bhakti, because bhakti is smarnam. Uh, chanting and hearing is, is meant to lead to remembering, and remembering is the goal, to always remember Krishna. Krishna says that in Gita, Manmana bhava mad bhakto. Always remember me, become my devotee. So, and the word always is most emphasized in Prabhupada's words and throughout the scriptures that the word always is there. And so and that means always remember means always practice to remember. <laughs> to always remember is a high stage of bhakti. But always trying to remember is as good as remembering 
because the endeavor will ultimately get Krishna's mercy. And Krishna will help you remember like that. So always trying to remember Krishna. And so the highest form of yoga, as is mentioned in Gita, is to concentrate the mind on the Lord. Okay, any questions? Yes, Jai Jagannath Prabhu. Once a devotee learns the various behaviors in Krishna consciousness, sometimes it, it is seen by personal experience and also vicariously that that can be used just as a veneer for hiding all types of crookedness <laughs> uh, and crooked behavior and crooked thinking process. Like sometimes, for example, I have experienced both personally and hearing from others, one may be having some negativity towards another devotee internally, but externally they have all types of very nice behaviors. They speak friendly, they show solidarity and hearing and chanting. You know, all the behaviors look very nice, but internally it's like a lot of crookedness going on. So how does one avoid that or get out of that type of situation? I would take issue with that premise that you can't continue to fake it if there's something inside that's different. You might do it in, in certain situations, but what's inside will come out under circumstances. You might try to be polite or what we say, act like there's nothing wrong, but a person can sense that. It's easy to sense that. It's just natural. So if there's something inside that needs to be corrected, yeah. It's nice to be externally polite, and we should do that also as a way of etiquette and behavior. And sometimes we do that even with people we know that are, you know, very sinful or respectful, but we know they're this, this is not the type of person that I would like to associate with because their character and their activities are, you know, bad. But, yeah, we should keep the external behavior nice, but at the same time we should correct the internal dichotomy or dysfunction. Because, you know, it's just like it says that, and there's no saying that there's a man, he speaks seven languages, and he speaks all of them fluently. So, he... The question is, how do you know which one language is his? Just hit him on the head and see which language he says ouch in, you know. <laughs> or, or <laughs> when he's in a dangerous situation, he speaks in his native tongue. <laughs> so what's inside will come out <laughs> under circumstance. It's true. <laughs> uh, asraya then Kirtita. <laughs> <laughs> when you mentioned um, if somebody says think of Krishna then you at least the way you were expressing it is that you may think of your particular deity or you may think of Kishore Kishori or something my first thought um, which I'm asking you if you see something wrong with that my first thought was that I would have chanted the holy name or, you know, or I would have thought of the holy name so I'm concerned about that if there's some um, thing missing from my practice of Krishna consciousness no. as a result. That's the f all thoughts lead are, are based on chanting. Prabhupada says that when you're chanting, actually Krishna's forms will appear in your mind automatically. But chanting is is also the form of the Lord. In the name, the forms are there. In the names, the qualities are there. In the names, the pastimes there. So if you if you think of Krishna, you're remembering the name, that's perfect. It's completely perfect. Yeah, there's nothing less in that. Not at all. Yes, yeah, Kirtita. Is that okay? Okay. You were talking about asking oh. questions, asking questions to saintly persons. 
Mm -hmm. And so something that I was wanting to hope that you could elaborate on is that when we begin to ask questions to saintly persons and hear from them, the next step is taking shelter from a saintly person. Or following what they say. Right, or following what they say. So my question is, is that sometimes it's difficult to develop enough faith to put our life in the hands of a saintly person or to develop enough faith to be able to um, surrender like that, especially when we see things going on that aren't necessarily so good, that sometimes, sometimes there are difficulties. Saintly persons may be showing some signs of difficulties. So you can just ask general questions. Right, but my question is, is how to develop that faith in Prabhupada and in the system that Srila Prabhupada gave in ISKCON and in the saintly persons that are here, the pure devotees that are here that are meant to guide us in our Krishna consciousness. How to develop that faith? How to develop it and how to, um, how to destroy within our heart the tendency to maybe want to, to put our faith in um, someone else or another process. Hmm. Well, faith comes by hearing. Faith comes by association. Faith comes by practice. Faith is fortified in different ways. Well, I think you have to get to know the person also. In other words, get to know the person means to hear from them. If you're hearing from them, then you can also develop faith up to a certain level. You know, just because a person has a position or is a preacher doesn't mean you have to have, you have to take shelter of them. You should listen to what they say and see if it it resonates with what Prabhupada said. If they're repeating Prabhupada or they're repeating, repeating the principles that Prabhupada has stated and giving their own realizations, then, it's, then you can say, oh, this person is worth listening to, maybe even taking shelter of getting guidance. On a personal level, you have to have some trust in the person too. Not only just some philosophical, what we say, being convinced on the philosophical. You have to trust the person too. And that takes developing either a personal relationship or hearing from others who have the similar trust in that person. Like that. So that's an ongoing thing. It's not something you just do. It's something you cultivate. We do that with everything, with everybody. We develop a relationship based on our experience of that relationship. So we hear from a person. Now, if we're hearing from a person and then their character is something different, then we might lose you know, the desire to hear from that person because their character is not up to the standard. So it it's a matter of when we say cultivating a relationship. It's not simply okay. You know, one person might tell you how great somebody else is, but you have to you, you, that, that may lead you to hear from them. But at the same time, you have to hear and make your own under, evaluation based on how your experience from hearing. So it takes time. That's almost like when, you've, when you're looking for a spiritual master. You don't just take the first person that comes along, although maybe after one year, it's the first one that came along was your spiritual master. You may take time to hear from different people and then hear from that person too. And finally, when you become convinced within your heart, not only within your mind, within your heart, that means convinced being in the heart means that you've, you're willing to serve that person. I mean, you actually, if they ask you to do service, you'll do that, and you'll, you'll be eager to do that. That's being convinced in the heart. You know, so it's, it's a cultivating of a relationship. <laughs> mm -hmm. It doesn't come just in the first meeting. <laughs> so then, can you comment on how, if we hear from other persons that may not necessarily be within ISKCON, how that can 
mess up our opportunity to actually develop a loving relationship with a bona fide spiritual master who can, or I should yeah. say bona fide, not that they're not bona fide, but with someone within ISKCON also then. Yeah, and there's that story. I'll probably tell it in the seminar this weekend. When Prabhupada in 1967 was, he was quite ill. He he just had his third heart attack and he was on his way back to India to recover after that. The bodies were new. Uh, Prabhupada was sitting in Long, I think it was Long Beach, California. He was in a cottage by the sea and Mukunda was with him. And Mukunda, you know, Prabhupada was just sitting there and Mukunda said, but Prabhupada, if you if you leave us, um, when you're gone, who sh- who should we take shelter of when you're gone? <laughs> Prabhupada became very grave and he turned away from Mukunda, looked out the window. Mukunda describes his look was very pensive. What was the ex- and then Prabhupada, you could see there was a tear coming down his eye. And then he said, turned around after a few minutes of silence, he said, my spiritual master saved me. If someone says something different, you'll lose some faith in your own spiritual master. So therefore, in hearing from others there's, there's, that are outside of Srila Prabhupada's, what we say, movement, there's a danger. They may say something different, or they may say something that Prabhupada said, but explain it in a different way. And then your faith will be pulled in different directions. You'll start to lose faith. Or you start to question. So, therefore, it's better... Chastity, we speak of the word chastity, chastity in hearing is also very important to hear from your spiritual master or to hear from Srila Prabhupada, both. That's called chastity. If we're hearing from so many different people, even in this kind, if we're hearing by so many, this guru and that guru and this guru, it's, we're losing some of our, what we say, chastity. Better to hear from your spiritual master, from Srila Prabhupada, and maybe one other senior devotee like that. That's my... Basic. I mean, if you go to class, that's one thing. But if you consciously try to hear, you know, turning on tapes or looking for that, if you're just hearing from everybody, then, you know, you might find some, what we say, in the beginning it's all right. When you're trying to find where you should go, then you should listen to different people. That you can do in the beginning. But once you take shelter than to go from this person, that person, this person, this person. That's that's pretty much like a prostitute. <laughs> Prostitutes always looking for pleasure in different ways with different individuals. Okay? Yes? My question is, because not everyone is on an equal platform. I mean, not everyone that you could possibly hear from is on an equal platform. Yeah, that that's true, but how do you know? You don't. But you don't. Uh, it's not a question. Uh, <laughs> you, you just answered your own question. <laughs> Thank you very much. I had a recent experience like that, too. Somebody was talking to me, and they were just saying one thing after another. I said, I got some questions. They said, be quiet. When I'm done, you can answer my. You can ask questions. When I was when I was done, they said any questions. I said no. <laughs> I said I forgot them all. They said no, you didn't forget them all. You just I answered all your questions. <laughs> so that's like that. So that was Malati. Anyway, she did that. She said, I said Malati, I got some questions. She said, be quiet, just listen. <laughs> so I did. <laughs> <laughs> She's my spiritual master. <laughs> we have to learn how to listen. Prabhupada, we got two ears and one tongue. So hearing is twice as important. <laughs> I must say, all of you are good listeners here. So that's one thing I noticed. 
Yes, yes. Uh, let's see if I remember your name. So I can't. For, I forgot it. Acharya Nishta, yeah, Acharya Nishta. Another Acharya. <laughs> so many Acharyas. Maharaj, on the topic of always remembering Krishna and always serving Krishna, we know that according to Tattva that you know Krishna pres prefers that one serves his devotees. So sometimes in my mind I go through this thing. Is it... <coughs> um, Krishna gives the instruction, manmana, but sometimes I'm, I'm considering to think of Krishna, you know, Svayam Bhagavan Krishna, as opposed to it's said that, well, you can't serve Krishna directly only through his devotees. Radharani is the foremost devotee, so you, one should take shelter of Radharani, so one should try to be serving Radharani, or one should be trying to serve Nityananda or his representatives, the six Goswamis. You know, it seems like sometimes my mind isn't set on... Where you want to where you want to place your consciousness. Just thinking of Krishna's... <laughs> you want to make it easy? Krishna. Just keep it at your spiritual masters or Prabhupada. Because <laughs> by pleasing them, it goes right to Krishna. <laughs> it says, if you want an understanding of the, the knowledge, um, your spiritual master is a representative of Lord Nityananda. <laughs> And so by serving him, you're actually getting the mercy of Nityananda. What's Nityananda's business? His, 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 Nityananda's business is to distribute the holy name everywhere. <laughs> That's his business. He goes everywhere to distribute the holy name. So when you get the mercy of Nit Lord Nityananda, you start chanting the holy name. And then when you become fixed in chanting the holy name, then you get the mercy of Goranga. And Garanga says, oh, he likes to chant. Oh, this is good. And Garanga then engages you more and more chanting. And then when you, your chanting starts to develop, then Garanga says, Radharani, I got somebody for you. <laughs> he's, looking like he's looking towards Vrindavan. And then Radharani says, all right, so let's see. So when you get the mercy of Garanga, you can get the mercy of Radharani. And then because Garanga is Radharani, it's mood. And then Radharani takes you into Vrindavan and she teaches you how to serve Krishna in the Vrindavan by taking shelter of her assist assistance. And then when you serve that way, then Radharani is pleased, pleasing her assistance, then you can get the mercy of Krishna, the full mercy. Krishna is, Krishna is the source of all mercy. So anybody who's distributing mercy is getting it from Krishna. But it comes down. So if you really want to get mercy... Stick your head at the lotus feet of your spiritual master, the lotus feet of Srila Prabhupada, and keep it there. <laughs> and you'll get a lot of mercy. You can offer prayers, but you can offer prayers to the six Goswamis. We, we sing the prayers by Srinivasa Acharya. We can offer prayers to Krishna. We can also chant Radharani's prayers on her appearance day. And on yesterday was Bahulastami. I forgot to mention it. It was the beginning of Radha Kund. How Radha Kund came. Beautiful pastime. Lord Chaitanya discovered Radha Kund and made it visible to the world. So yesterday was the anniversary of the celebration of Radha Kund's beginning. Or, yeah. The beautiful pastime of Krishna killing the Aristasura demon and then ultimately digging Radha Kund and Shama Kund like that. Beautiful story. So, the mercy comes down. The mercy comes down. So we can think about or pray to any of the personalities, but if you really want to get the power of your prayer, keep it at your spiritual master's lotus feet. There's where you get the power. Because he'll take it to where it's supposed to go. <laughs> he'll take it to where it's supposed to go. The guru is in your spiritual master is everything. That's your that's the effect of your that's the that's the power of your spiritual uh, advancement. Do everything through the spiritual master. When I say spiritual master, I mean both Prabhupada and our personal guru, both like that. Don't neglect Prabhupada. Both. 
Okay, does that help? Yes, Prabhu. Hare Krishna. Um, my question was going back to the topic of Vaishnava etiquette, and I was wondering if you could speak a little on how to avoid making it merely uh, ritualistic in our interactions, but make, ensuring that they're always still from the heart while observing proper uh, guidelines of etiquette. Because it's, it's pleasing to Krishna. It's pleasing to the Vaishnavas. Do it as a service. It's pleasing. You, the program of devotional service means to please Krishna, please the devotees. So do it with that mood. Do it as a service. Don't, okay, I have to do it. That's one thing. But also do it. I think devotees like to do things that are in line with what is correct. I know. So the, the, a sincere devotee is always thinking, oh, if I could learn something new, that's nice. And that way I can practice that also. So as we learn things, but, but do it as a devotion, devotional act. Just like when we pay our obeisances, there's a way to pay our obeisances nicely, and there's a way to just do it in such a way as to get it done. You lay, you know, you prostrate yourself on the floor, and you chant the prana mantras of your spiritual master in Prabhupada. Or if it's just Prabhupada or just your spiritual master, and spiritual master in Prabhupada. Prabhupada never liked devotees just bowing their head on the floor and then getting up real quick. He criticized that. He called it hatchet. You know, a hatchet goes chuk chuk. <laughs> Uh, you know, we, you know, we were in a hurry, and so we just, you know, do the ritual. Sometimes people don't even make it to the floor. They get almost there. Flew to the floors too far down and waste too much time. <laughs> so taking obeisances is one of the four uh, principles of bhakti. As Krishna says, manmana bhava mad bhakta, man yaji mam namas guru. Offer your homage to me. So obeisances means to the spiritual master, to the Vaishnavas, to the Lord. <laughs> so do it, even if it's even if you don't feel it from your heart, do it nicely. This is one way to help and bring about the heart. If we do it nicely, then we also start to invoke the proper mood. So whatever you do, try to do it nicely. Even if you're not so much you know, coming from the heart, at least you should come from the idea, let me do this as nice as possible. Because wanting to do something nice is also a feature of bhakti. It's a feature of bhakti, to put quality in whatever we do. It's an expression of concern, not for our own false ego, but also to please the Lord like that. And practice. <laughs> sometimes we're there and sometimes we're not, but just keep trying, that's all. <laughs> just keep practicing. Yes? Just uh, another quick question. You mentioned rising when a saintly person enters yeah, the Yeah, it's mentioned here. <laughs> and in terms of japa, you also indicated that except during meditation. So, uh, you know, practical You're question. chanting japa, then... Okay. That means you're breaking your connection with Krishna <laughs> just to do that. So better to even if you're eating prashadam and you know, somebody comes in, you can just go like this because eating prashadam is associating with Krishna. And um another kind of question as far as etiquette goes. I'm wondering, sometimes due to our upbringing and the circumstances of Kali Yuga, uh, often our language can be more like modern, a lot of slang. And I'm wondering where that fits, if that's kind of more like a breach of etiquette or is there room for being kind of friendly and casual talking in that kind of more relaxed language? Um, or could that be, is that kind of more a distraction from our consciousness? 
it's better to the language also helps to bring about the proper consciousness. That's why we use Prabhu. And speak politely and respectively. To be respective. Some language is disrespective. <laughs> some of the vernacular or some of the street talk is, is a little disrespective. Or ordinary or too casual. It depends. With seniors you should never do that. With equals, sometimes we slip. With juniors, if you do that, then they'll get the wrong impression. <laughs> like that, so. Better to... It's better to speak properly. Speaking properly means also speaking devotionally. <laughs> Etiquette is really a fine-tuning of our consciousness to all aspects of how we sit. That's why Krishna says, what is the quality of a saint? How does he sit? How does he talk? How does he walk? Hmm. All these qualities are part of Vaishnav culture. Hmm. Arjuna asks you know, that question. You can tell a saintly person by their behavior, by their mannerisms, by their speech. Not always by their speech, but by the way they behave with others. Sometimes we get casual, we get friendly, we go back to that. I mean, it's not an offense, but you'll just find that it just kind of brings them, the mood down to ordinary again. It loses the, the, the spiritual flavor. Just Bhakti Thakur gives the criteria, just be respectful to all. He says, somehow I live in this world because I respect everyone. So giving respect is different to different types of people. In the Bhagavatam, who has the, who has the, the database? Anybody with them right now? Yeah, first canto, 11th chapter, verse 22. This is really nice. This is Krishna. Krishna's greeting different types of people. And there's eight different ways he greets eight different types of people. Krishna is showing the etiquette how to interact and behave with different types of people. A one eleven twenty two, I'm pretty sure. What does it say? So these different ways were ways he was interacting with different types of people. <laughs> Embracing was equals, shaking hands. That was like, I'm not sure exactly what was the relationship there. S -s -s giving smiles and assurances to those in a lesser position. Offering obeisances to those who, who he, they were acting in a position of spirit. So Krishna was showing how to, how to properly behave towards different types of people. That's nice. When when the sages came during the Raja Surya sacrifice, each of the Pandavas had a particular service, and Krishna also had a service, and his service was to wash the feet of the sadhus. <laughs> so when the sadhus came, the Lord was washing their feet. He did that with Narada Muni. Narada Muni could understand this was Krishna. But Narada didn't say anything because he knew Krishna wanted to show proper etiquette, so he accepted it. Although if, Krishna, if God wants to wash your feet, you probably would run, right? <laughs> but Narada, he knew. He was just trying to acknowledge Krishna's behavior in such a way as to show, he wanted to show example of how, how to receive a saintly person. Yeah, it's pretty amazing. So, the, as as, as uh, Lord Chaitanya says, the ornament of a Vaishnava is his behavior. 
Um, the example is if you're dressed up nicely and you have a nice, maybe, sari on, you look very nice. And if you have a nice flower in your hair with some ribbons, that's like an ornament and that's noticeable. If you're dressed nicely in, in your dhoti and but you have a particular flower maybe on your chest and that's like an ornament it stands out. So sometimes we put an ornament on, on a very nicely dressed person. So the ornament of a Vaishnava is his behavior, how he behaves like that. So behavior is important. So there's there's books on this. Sats Rupa Maharaj has written some, and throughout the Shastras there's also there's books on Vaishnava etiquette like that. Twenty six qualities of a Vaishnava by Sats Rupa Maharaj. He wrote, he wrote that back in the seventies. That was the the quintessence of all the books on Vaishnava etiquette. It was the best. So yeah, etiquette is very important. And what's the perfect etiquette? Humility. If you're humble, you have you have somehow or other understood what is etiquette. <laughs> Even if you make a mistake, if you're humble, nobody will care about the mistake. Because <laughs> humility is the is the ornament of all ornaments. It's the ornament. Of, that's why Krishna mentions it first. In the qualities of a Vaishnav, or the twenty qualities of knowledge is mentioned first. It says that humility is so powerful; it's as good as bhakti itself. <laughs> wow! Humility is so powerful; it is bhakti, as good as bhakti itself. So, one who is actually humble or understands the qual principles that govern humility and is practicing that becomes recognized by the Lord. So, in humble, humility is not so much an external behavior. It manifests itself external. But humility is a state of consciousness where one sees himself as servant and insignificant. <laughs> one sees himself as simply being a servant and never considers whatever they do important. <laughs> Always thinking, I can't do anything. But somehow, let me try anyway. <laughs> you know, that's humility. Humility doesn't relegate one to inactivity. It inspires one to do things. If what is called low self-esteem, you've heard of that? When people have low self-esteem, what has happened? They don't want to do anything because they feel like, I can't do anything, I'm useless. That's material. But a, a Vaishnava is humble, but he knows that whatever I do or whatever I am is simply the mercy of my spiritual master, that's all. And therefore, he can be enthusiastic. Prabhupada, you know, proud wrote books, traveled around the world, met important people. But he was very humble. Because he knows it's just by the mercy of the spiritual master and the Lord that I'm empowered to do these things. And one who knows that and acts in that way, they become empowered. Like that. And Krishna likes to empower the humble. That's why in the Bible it says, the meek shall inherit the earth. <laughs> Humility means that they are the top, they are the best. <laughs> because they have understood what it means. So humility is, is something we have to practice. <laughs> it's the essence of all etiquette. Okay, thank you. Srila Prabhupada ki jai, Srimad Bhagavatam ki jai, Gaur Premanandi Haribo.